What's up guys? Welcome to another MXA tested video. Today we are testing the 2023 Suzuki RMZ450. This bike has a lot of pros, but also a lot of cons. It's more of a price point model. We wish it would be a little bit lower on the price totem pole, but we're happy that they're producing this bike. We're happy that they're here with us at the track at Glen Helen, helping us get this thing dialed in for the new model season. So we know a lot about this bike because it hasn't changed in a few years. And we're gonna break down all the pros and cons about the Suzuki RMZ450 in this video. All right guys, we've mentioned this in other videos and we'll mention it again. There are a few 450s that have not changed for the 2023 model season. The Kawasaki KX450, the Gas Gas MC450F, and the Suzuki RMZ450 behind me here are all exactly same for the new model season. So all the things we complained about last year, yes, we're gonna complain about them again this year. Suzuki is the best price point bike in the class, but you're gonna have to fix a lot of things to get the same comfort on this bike and its stock form that you get on the other bikes right off the showroom floor. So today was my first day on the Suzuki RMZ450 in a while. I haven't ridden this bike in months now, but riding it today, I gotta tell you guys, the engine isn't fast. It's the slowest 450 in the class, but it's fairly easy to ride. It's something that I think a lot of my friends who don't race and ride full time, who aren't racing pro nationals or supercross can get on this RMZ450 and have some fun and lug it around and uh, ride it in the meat of the power. But where my buddies and where our viewers are gonna really struggle with the RMZ450, is with the suspension and the chassis. So this frame is very, very stiff. The engine mounts in their stock form are very stiff and the suspension is surprisingly pretty soft. The show of fork are soft and this also has the BFRC shock, which is a totally different shock configuration than the conventional shock you find on the RMZ250. Interesting to note though, this shock was actually used by Chase Sexton in the Outdoor Nationals this year and the same style shock was used by Tim Geyser over in the MXGP series. So uh, Geyser's been on the BFRC show a shock for a while and then Chase Sexton started running it this year in the Nationals but in its stock form on the Suzuki RMZ 450 it has a completely different feel than what you find on the RMZ 250. I was not very comfortable on the bike today. We made a few changes to the suspension trying to get some balance. We started it out with the sag fairly low compared to other brands. We ran the sag at 108 millimeters in the in the rear and after the first session I was getting a lot of uh, dancing in the rear. The forks were diving coming into the corners because they're pretty soft so we went stiffer on the forks went stiffer in a couple different increments went two clicks stiffer and then went four clicks stiffer on the compression and ended up liking that six click stiffer on the forks and then as for the shock went from 108 sag to 110 that was the biggest difference and the best benefit i had today that offered me the most comfort and we also slowed down the rebound we went from one turnout to a half a turnout to slow down that rear so that was my happy spot on the rmz 450 today but i was not very happy this bike was dancing all around the track, pretty hard to hold on to and pretty harsh in your hands. Coming into uh, a corner before the, the long start straight we have here at Glen Helen, early on in the day, I was not tired or fatigued. Hitting some of the braking bumps, my right hand actually came off the bars. It was pretty sketchy, but it's very harsh. The Suzuki RMZ450 has a harsh hand feel and uh, it takes a while to get comfortable on this bike. The best fix we can tell you about the shock to get some more comfort on the RMZ450, no, it's not cheap, but if you have an RMZ250, we recommend taking that shock off your 250 sticking it here on the 450 it's kind of funny that the 250 we complain about that the forks and the shock are too stiff and then when we get to the 450 we complain they're too soft kind of a contrast there it seems like a common theme though on the kawasaki 450 we complain about it being soft and the kawi 250 we complain about it being stiff so maybe something's going on there there's a correlation between the two suzuki rmz 450 it works a lot better when you put the standard production shock off of the suzuki rmz 250 on there and then you get it valved for your weight and your skill level other things to know FCP engine mounts are a big benefit on the Suzuki RMZ450. They help out and just make the chassis quite a bit more compliant. And its stock form, this thing is very, very rigid and stiff.
Other things that we really appreciate on the Suzuki RMZ450, aftermarket exhaust systems from Pro Circuit or FMF. Uh, we've tested the F FMF one most recently. You can check that out at motocrossactionmag.com. We have a full write-up on that. That helps the spike out a lot. On the dyno charts, the RMZ450 is not much stronger than the KTM 350, but the difference is the KTM 350, you have to ring it out, get high up into that 14,000 RPM peak where you get the most horsepower out of that 350 bike. You ride it like a 250 really, but with the RMZ 450, we like to say that this has a bell-shaped curve where the power comes on smooth, hits hard in the mid-range, and that's where you like to keep it because it does not have any overrev. It completely falls off on the overrev, and you're not going to get any extra power by ringing this thing out. This thing likes to be short-shifted, and with that, we do like to add an extra tooth on the sprocket. So come stock with a 1350 ratio. We like to go up to a 1351 ratio. That definitely helps us by coming out of corners and just keeping it into the meat of the power. Another thing to note about the RMZ 450 and something that I felt big time today on the track was this thing is heavy. It is the heaviest stock 450 in the class at 241 pounds. And when your rear end's dancing and when your front end's diving coming into corners, you feel that extra weight. The track wasn't crazy rough here at Glen Helen, but you guys can see in the videos that Travis got, there's quite a few corners where I'm standing it up in the middle and kind of hesitating before pivoting and getting back on the gas. I mentioned it in our RMZ 250 video, which you can check out on our YouTube and our website. The RMZ 450, it turns best when you have something to bank off of. When there's only a shallow rut or really no rut in the corner and you're kind of flat tracking, this thing does not want to turn. So for me coming into corners, I'm managing that extra weight it has. I'm managing the kick it has in the rear end and I'm looking for any kind of rut, berm, or anything soft I can bank off of and really find and really turn into the apex of the corner for me to get it turned and get it going in the next direction. Another thing to note about that extra weight, 241 pounds, extremely heavy. And for everybody who's begging Suzuki to add an electric start, an electric battery onto this bike, just know that typically when bikes go to an electric start, they're adding weight. At KTM, they've had the e-start for years and years now and they've figured out a way to do it. Save so much weight on other parts of the bike that it's still a light motorcycle. Um, Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, they've all been working on the e-start for years now, but if Suzuki were to add a couple pounds, that would not be a good thing, even if it meant you'd have electric start. Another cool thing about the Suzuki RMZ 450, it does come with options for mapping. So they give you different couplers. No, you can't change it on the fly by switching on your handlebar but they do give you a couple different couplers. We put the aggressive coupler in there today and it's a little bit lighter off the throttle, a little bit more snappy and also lighter on engine braking coming into corners. So that is something I would definitely recommend if you have a stock RMZ 450 and uh, something that would just liven up the bike a little bit and make it run a little bit better on the track. Retailing at $8,999 base price, you can find an RMZ 450 even lower than that at the dealerships. And that's really the best part about the Suzuki 450 is that it's a value a price point that uh, starts out lower than the other motorcycles on the showroom floors. But with that, you're getting a motorcycle that also isn't up to par with the other bikes in the class, with so the KTM, the Yamaha, the Honda, the Kawasaki. With the Suzuki 450, you're really gonna wanna fix the suspension and you're probably gonna wanna add an aftermarket exhaust and get some FCP engine mounts. So that does raise up the price. We're hoping that in the future, Suzuki either comes out with an all new RMZ 450 that's lighter, faster, has an electric start and keeps moving forward. Or if they don't wanna spend the time on making a brand new bike or spend the money on making a brand new bike that can compete with the best in the class, I would be happy to see them dial in the suspension settings, make them a little bit stiffer, a little more consistent, get a little more balance out of this bike, and then drop that price point way down. Okay with the cable clutch. I'm okay with kickstarting the bike. I'm okay with not having premium tires and uh, not having the best of the, of the best on this bike. But if you can give it to me at 6,000 6, base price, I mean, how great would that be to have a bike that's easier for riders to get into motocross, easier for the average rider who's uh, coming out of high school, just got a job, wants to buy his first motocross bike, he could buy a brand new Suzuki at a lower price point. Yes, they're already lower than the rest of the bikes, but I think Suzuki either has to make a decision whether they're gonna go chasing KTM, Honda, and Yamaha with a brand new motorcycle, or come out with a new bike. That's, those are some uh, ideas. I know it's been talked about for a long time, and uh, I think there's a huge market for that in our motocross, supercross world. The Suzuki RMZ 450 is still a great bike to ride. We appreciate the Suzuki was out here with us today. We appreciate that they're not leaving motocross anytime soon. They assured us that they're still making progress and still gonna keep supporting the motocross market. Thanks to Suzuki for that, but we're looking forward to them hopefully making some changes to this bike, working on the durability of their clutch, stiffening up the suspension and making it overall just a little bit easier to ride in the coming years.
All right, guys, thanks for watching our 2023 Suzuki RMZ 450 test video. We appreciate you guys checking in. Stay tuned to motocrossactionmag.com. We got lots more stuff coming to the channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with our latest videos and keep up to date with our Instagram as well. We're gonna be traveling and testing some really cool bikes here coming up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.